Well, hey, y'all, welcome to church again. Let me just say a couple of things. First of all, I hope you're staying well. We trust that you are staying at home and staying healthy, and we're praying for you. You keep praying for us. Keep connecting with our content online, uh, because that's how we're going to keep the whole church together. Also, at this point in the service, I always talk about uh, giving. I would have the ushers come down. We'd take the offering. I want to remind you, I've said it every week, and you guys have been awesome about keeping up with this, but tithing is not a matter of payment for services rendered. It's a matter of our worship. So in this point of our worship, you make sure you go online and give. I'm sure you know how to do all of that by now. Uh, but you make sure you go on online and give. And one more time, one more time, if you are if you don't go to church here, if this is not your church home, you give to your church home, they need it, all right? God will take care of us while you take care of them, all right? But if this is your church home, God's going to take care of us through you. Just saying. All right. So we're in week three now of our series on signs and wonders. Again, coming out of a book by Dr. Stephen Elliott called By Signs and Wonders. It'll It's available on Amazon if you want to pick that up. And we are, we, we've committed ourselves this month to doing four things, praying, fasting, believing, and trusting. Praying. Why? Because when we're on our knees praying, we've got ourselves in right position before our God. We are surrendered. And we've talked over and over and over again throughout this series, and I'm going to keep doing it, about the fact that this, seeing the miraculous work through us, is a matter of surrender. Uh, again, these doctrines are not doctrines of power so much as they're doctrines of surrender. When we surrender ourselves to the Holy Spirit, holiness takes hold. When we surrender ourselves to the Holy Spirit, uh, the miraculous can take hold. When we have surrendered ourselves, when we have surrendered ourselves to the point that it's not about us anymore, that's when the Holy Spirit is released. That's when, to use a phrase I used last week, that's when we get out from behind the tree and we start to see what God is really doing. Praying, which puts me in right position. Fasting, which teaches me to deny myself of something for the glory of God. Listen, uh, self-discipline and, and self-control is a major part of Christianity, of Christian living. And so, so, so when, we, when we discipline ourselves, when we deny ourselves, when we fast something, give something up to the glory of our God, what we are doing is we are, we're again lowering ourselves. We're again submitting ourselves to a God who is just looking for us to quit resisting so that he can see us through. You know, then, then, there's, then there's believing. We've got to, you know, faith, y'all, I know that I know this is this is seen as shallow by some people, but you got to hear me. Faith requires faith. You got to believe that God's going to do something. You've got to believe that God can and will move on our behalf. You got to believe that God cares enough about our world that He will do the miraculous. He will intersect our normal with His supernatural. And our God can do that. We need to believe that he will. We need to have faith, expectant faith, believing, and then trusting. When God does not move the way we want him to, or when God does not move the way we expect him to, we can't dismiss, well, God didn't do a miracle this time. Well, maybe he did. But maybe it's just not the way you expected it. Maybe it's not the way you saw it. Maybe it's not what you wanted, but it's what God did. The truth is God does his work, his way in his time. And we've got to trust that he knows what's right for us. There are plenty of times in my life that I, I've wanted God to do things one way or I've wanted God to do one thing and he didn't do it. He did something else. And I've thought to myself, God, what are you doing? What's going on? Did you, did you miss it? Did you, were, were, you know, were you not paying attention? And it, look, God is always paying attention. So these are not safe questions, really. Well, they are because God loves us. But we've got to understand it's God's will, not ours. And when we submit ourselves to his will that way, then all of a sudden we're in right position to see his power move through us. When we're fighting against him, when we're not trusting him, is when we're in trouble. You know, it's kind of like someone that's drowning. When you jump in to help someone that's drowning, you've got to be careful because in their panic, they won't surrender to your help. You see, what they really need to do, if you're healthy, you're strong, and you're, you're fresh, and you're in here trying to help them as they're drowning, what they need to do is allow themselves to just surrender 
to your help. Because quite frankly, when they stop thrashing, they'll float better. When they stop fighting you, you can pull them in, you can help them. But if they're thrashing against you, your help, it's there, but they're not going to experience it because they're fighting you. They're actually fighting what would save them. Church, church, listen, we can find ourselves fighting the very power of God that is designed to save us if we aren't careful. We've got to surrender ourselves to our God. Now, miracles. I use this phrase a lot. Now, I just want to unpack it for just a minute because this week and next week, I want to deal with the power of miracles, what miracles really look like. And, and, and I, I, I want to dispense with what I think is a misconception on our part. I think we always expect a miracle to come with uh, uh, spotlights and explosions. It's it's like the exciting part in a movie where everything starts to explode and the cars jump and the people scream and everything's going. And we expect miracles to kind of work like that. We kind of expect miracles to be these explosive moments, these loud moments, these out front moments. Can I just tell you, God tends to not work that way. God's not into, stay with me now, stay, I, 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 some of you are going to argue with me, but stay with me. In general, God's not really into the flashy. It's, our, it's the enemy of our souls that's into the flashy. The enemy of our souls wants to make things explode and wants to make everything loud and make everything chaotic. Our God's really not like that. If you, I could take you, take you to a few places, but you know, I, I could take you to Elijah on Mount Carmel, where where the the prophets of Baal, there there there's a there's a there's a game going on. It's 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 actually a challenge between the God Baal and God of Israel, God. And so basically, the idea is they built two altars and they said, "Pray to your God and the God that sends down fire to consume the altar. That'll be the real God." Well, the prophets of Baal, Elijah told them to go first. Well, they were screaming and hollering and dancing around, cutting themselves, doing all kinds of crazy things, just chaos, old, absolute chaos. And eventually Elijah just starts picking on him and say, well, maybe he's deaf, scream louder. And, and they, they scream louder. Well, maybe he's at the bathroom, give him a minute. You know, he's just, he's just picking on them. Then Elijah steps up and says, you know what? Dig a ditch around mine. In fact, around both of them. Now, now go get water and keep pouring water on it till it's soaking wet and the ditch around it is full of water. So they did that. And Elijah got down and I paraphrased the, the prayer, but he basically said, God, show these people who you are. No screaming, no dancing, no hollering, no cutting, nothing like that. Just God, show yourself. And you know what God did? God came down with such a powerful fire that it, it, it consumed not only God's offering, the one Elijah set up, it consumed the one that had been set up to Baal. That's what God's power can do. Now, that's flashy. That's explosive. I got that. I got that. But the prayer wasn't. Elijah's part wasn't. Elijah's part was just quiet. When Jesus raised the dead, he would, he would often just walk up and say, get up. Nothing, nothing... Oh, great and mighty. They didn't do all that. It was just, hey, get up. You know why? Because, listen, hey, lean up. When you actually have power, you don't have to make a show of it. And God actually has power. That, that, that's what we need to understand about it is we're looking for the magic trick. We're looking for the explosive moment in the movie. We're looking for all that stuff. God's just looking to do something outside of that supersedes our natural. God's just wanting to be himself in our world. But God being himself in our world is miraculous to us. And God just wants to be himself. Let me show you a few of these. In Acts chapter 3, you get one of these early miracles where Peter said, Peter and John are headed to the gate called Beautiful, and, and they, they see a beggar there, and the beggar is asking them for money, and, and Peter and John stop, and they say, look at us, and so the guy looks up, obviously hoping to get some money, and then Peter says this to him, silver or gold I do not have, watch, 
the trappings of the world I do not have. Watch. The power of the world I do not have. Listen, the thing you think you want, I do not have. But what I do have, but what I do have, I give you. Watch. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. The guy wants a dollar, and Peter gives him the healing he thought he could never have. It's not dramatic. There's, there, 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 he didn't draw a crowd. He didn't set up a stage. He doesn't, he doesn't whoo, and everybody passes out. No, nothing like that. In fact, there's not even, to my, to my knowledge, when I read this, there's not even an audience. There, there, there's, just, there's just the people that are walking to the gate. Maybe there's a group of people following Peter and John because it seems that people followed them everywhere. But, but it's not like they had set up a big tent revival service, a big healing service. No, no, no. They're just walking down the street. And the dude says, hey, can you give me some money? And they stopped. They said, well, you know what? Listen, listen to the words. Listen to the words. What you're asking for is what the world says you need. But what I can give you is what God says will set you free. Watch. The power of this miracle is a power over sickness. Any kind of sickness. You, you, it, could be, it could be a physical sickness, a mental sickness. It could be a physical disability. It could be a, an internal sickness. Any kind of sickness. In this case, the man can't walk. He's got a sickness that causes him to be unable to walk. But I want, you, I want you to watch. I want you to watch. I want you to watch. It could be a spiritual sickness. I want you to watch. The real outcome of this power over sickness is a new strength that you did not have when the whole moment began. He found a new strength. You know, what sickness does to us, what dis-ease does to us is it weakens us. In this man's case, his legs were weak and he could not stand up and walk. In our case, maybe, maybe depression has left us to the point that we don't have the strength to get up and move on. Maybe, maybe stress has left us to the point that we, we can't, our bodies can't heal itself. Maybe we're truly physically sick. But in the end, watch. I want you to see the deeper work that is done in the miracle. The deeper work in the miracle is a new strength. Whatever the weakness, whatever the illness, whatever the sickness, whatever, whatever the problem, there is in Christ a new strength. That's what God wants to give you. That's what's really going on here is a new strength. Listen, we may say, well, I want to walk into the hospital and like lay hands on somebody and then get up and, and start shouting and running the, run the hallway. Okay, wait, wait. No, no, no. God wants to give help and strength to people who lack that. And he wants to do that through you. And it may be a moment where you look at them and you say, rise and walk, and they get up. That's, just, that, that's the obvious miracle. Or it may be more the fact that they've been waiting on somebody like you to show up. And once you show up, through the power of the Holy Spirit in you, they find the strength to get up and move on. That is no less miraculous than what happened right here in Acts chapter 3. See, when we help people, when the Holy Spirit leads us to someone who needs what we have, and we give them through his guidance and his words and his strength, we give them the strength to move on, a new strength they did not have before. When that happens, that's miraculous to somebody. It's a miracle when you just show up. You know I, I got to be honest, I can't even tell you how many times I've turned a corner in a store or I've, or I, I've run into somebody in the street or, I, or I've walked up to someone and, and just said hello when they didn't realize who I was. And they say, oh, oh, I've, I've literally had people go, oh, and, and it's like, it's like I was just praying and you came to mind and God just sent you here. And all of a sudden, either they're saying something that's going to bless me or I'm able to pray for them and be the strength. They, that's miraculous. That's a, that, that's a gift. That's a power of healing. That's a power over sickness that allows them to find strength they did not have before. I want to show you this next one. Look at this one. Look at this one. Peter uh, shows up in, 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 uh, in Lydda, and, and, and as, he, as he shows up, he gets there just in time 
to realize that one of their main leaders, a, a woman named Tabitha or Dorcas, both names, uh, one is Greek, one is Hebrew, and, and he walks in he, and he realizes this woman has just died. Everyone is mourning her. And, and, and they show him the beautiful things she made for other people. This was a woman who was known for doing good works and known for a big heart all across the area. And everybody is mourning her death. Watch. Peter sent them all out of the room. Acts chapter 9, verse 40. Peter sent them all out of the room. Then he got down on his knees and prayed. Look, you, you see this, right? Nothing flashy. He doesn't even have an audience. In fact, watch. He sends the audience away. It's not about them. And it's not about him looking strong in front of them. It's all about what God's going to do. He sends everybody out. He gets on his knees and he prays. Turning toward the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. See how, see how, see how undramatic this is? I think sometimes, well, again, I think what we want is the big poof. I think we we'll want the shock moment when God just wants to do what's natural to him. This is not, again, again, how many times have I said it? This is not God doing magic tricks. This is God just being himself. And Peter realizes this is what God wants to do. And so he looks at her and he says, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. Look, there's power over sickness, which is giving new strength. There's also power over death, which is giving new hope. You're saying, Pastor, are you telling me that if we have enough faith, we can raise the dead? Okay, okay, you haven't been listening to me for the past three weeks. It's not about the size of your faith. It's about your faith in a huge God. It's not about the size of you. No, 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 no. You do not and you cannot have enough faith to raise the dead. But your God is powerful enough to raise the dead if he chooses to do it. Not because you want him to and not because you prayed right. Not because you're living right or not because you said the right words. No, it's not like that. It's his power over death. Watch. And it may be that it may, it, it, may, it could be other than just physical death. There's a lot of death in our world. There's death of dreams and there's death of relationships. There's death of marriages. There's death of families. There, there, there's death of careers. All of these things. Any one of these things feels like a death in your life. And in that moment, what you need is a new hope. New, uh, new strength was given to those who were sick. Now new hope is given to those who have seen their hope die. Y'all, God sends us to give hope to the hopeless because our world, Y'all, no, our world is convinced there is no hope. Our world is lost in a sad and dark place. And it's time for us, through the word of God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, speaking his words into the, exactly the right moment to give new hope to those who are showing us the leftovers of what has just died in their lives. And we're here to say no. No, no, no. Our God can bring that back. You can have hope. Yeah, our, our world needs that kind of a miracle. Look, it's power over sickness, it's power over death, and it's power over darkness. In Acts chapter 16, uh, Paul is in, is in Philippi, and Paul and his group are in Philippi. And, and they're, they're preaching, they're walking along the street, and this, this girl who is possessed by a demon that te that's a fortune teller, the demon tells the future, and so her owners, she's a slave girl, and her owners are using her to be a fortune teller, and they're making a fortune off of her telling fortunes. But she, she, the spirit inside of her recognizes Paul and, and, and follows them around. Watch, she followed Paul and the rest of us. This is Acts chapter 16, verses 17 and 18. She followed Paul around and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God, God who are telling you the way to be saved. You see, even the demons know who knew about Paul and know who God is, okay? She kept this up for many days. Finally, it says, Paul became so annoyed 
that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And at that moment, the spirit left her. There's not only power over sickness and power over death, there's also power over darkness. Now, I want you to hear me. This is huge right now. We need to ask our God to give us the ability to see and respond to people who are caught in dark places, especially right now. People isolated from their families, people afraid because of, the, uh, because of a pandemic, people scared to leave their house, people scared to touch another human being, people scared to even think through what might be next. We need God to show us we need God to empower us. We need God to deliver us from this darkness. And there's power over that kind of darkness. And when we find power over darkness, what God is giving us is a new freedom, a freedom we did not have before. It, just like in the first point, a strength we did not have before. Second point, a hope we did not have before. Third point, a freedom we did not have before. Watch, this girl was not only a slave to, 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 to human beings. This girl was a slave to the demons that she could not exercise from her own heart and habits. Church, how many of us are caught as slaves to a demon we can't seem to defeat? But I'm here to tell you that God can set you free from that kind of darkness. I'm here to tell you that God can use you to help set someone else free from that kind of darkness. And that's what God wants to do. He wants to use each one of us to bring new strength, to bring new hope, and to bring new freedom into people's lives. But in order to do it, we've got to get ourselves in a surrendered state so that the power of God can work through us and we can be a conduit of God's power into other people's lives. And that power will work in miraculous ways in their lives. Not because we're awesome, not because we're cool, not because we have any ability at all, but because our God is greater than their sickness. Our God is greater than their death. Our God is greater than their darkness. Our God is greater than everything, anything and everything else out there. But we need to be surrendered to him because he's the answer because we're not. People say, well, the church is the hope of the world. No, Jesus is the hope of the world. The church is just bringing him to the world. And I got to tell you, it's time for us to stop looking for the pyrotechnics of a magic trick. And it's time for us to surrender to the God who's less interested in the flashy showboatmanship of our world and instead interested in making people's lives better, giving them new strength that they did not believe they could ever find, new hope that they never thought was possible and a new freedom that they truly thought had passed them by. God wants to use you that way. You need to be praying, fasting, believing, and trusting that God's going to use you that way. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen carefully. Don't you pray that God will use the pastor that way. Not just that. You pray God will use you that way. Every single one of us. God can use to be a, a miracle in the lives of someone around us. We just have to surrender to him. And we have to understand the miracle is not about us. The miracle is about what God wants to show to them. And then God will show them a new strength. God will give them a new hope. And God will set them free. Don't you want God to work in you that way? Just surrender to his will, praying, fasting, believing, trusting, and let him do his work through you. Let me pray with you. Holy Spirit, speak to us right now. Lord, many of us have been the last couple of weeks being as surrendered as we know how to be. So now, Holy Spirit, speak to us and show us Show us someone that we can go to and offer through your power a new strength, a healing strength. Show us, Lord, as we walk around someone who has lost all hope, they've seen the death of all their hope, and Lord, show us how we can communicate to them 
your hope, your power, your life in the midst of death. And Father God, show us someone who is trapped in darkness and does not believe they can be free and help us to show them the freedom, the freedom that comes from the Son of God, Jesus, for who the Son sets free is free indeed. Thank you, God. We trust you. Keep us safe. And let us be a conduit of your power to the world around us. In your name we pray.